Hi everyone, my name is Andre Nicolaou and I am the Child Exploitation Prevention Officer for the Force. So what is online exploitation? Um, is when an individual or a group of people are using the online platforms to take advantage of in, in balance of power in order to coerce, to manipulate or deceive a child or a young person. Um, and that means anybody under the age of 18 into sexual or criminal or both. Uh, and, and the exploitation can happen both online and offline. So what is online grooming? Is, is an act um, in order to develop a relationship with the child to enable their abuse and the exploitation. And again, it can happen online and offline. It can start from online and can go to offline, like the contact they, they may have. Um, online platforms like online gaming, social media, messaging, live streaming can be used to do that. So how does online grooming happen? It can happen through online gaming. Many games offering online, um, online gaming playing and features. And some, in some cases, also gaming can be used as part of grooming and exploitation of children, especially when they ask the children to go into the private chats uh, side of the gaming. Um, some of the risk is that anybody can adopt any identity and it's not always possible to know who they're talking to online. And online gaming platforms um, can be used to send money or gifts to the children to groom them and to exploit them. Also, um, online gamers may steal or delete um, online credit and possessions of the children in order to coerce the, and blackmail them into criminal or sexual activity or both. Um, Children, they find losing their online possessions and credits as, as upsetting as they are finding losing their possessions in the real world. Um, so sharing information, they can share information without whilst they're playing online without even realizing they're doing it because they they just feel so comfortable that may be talking to the same person for, for long um, or they might be manipulated into sharing um, more sensitive information and images. Um, how the online grooming happening on social media? Um, I mean, our children is constantly connected online with their friends, sometimes with people they don't know or with people they do know. Um, there are many opportunities for social media to be misused, to groom and exploit. Um, some of the risk, again, is anybody can adopt any identity, and um, young people don't always know who they are talking to online. Um, constant contact with online uh, social media, especially, um, kids don't get um, arrest. Is always or well, what? What my friends are saying? What are they saying about this game? What is happening? So um, again, this is another way um, for coercion and control, and also the sharing in images um, online. Um, they can coerce young people to send in these images or share sensitive information, which can be used to force them into sexual or criminal activity. And also people can use uh, images and information that is already public and posted by the young people. And that is normal photographs like they're with their friends, with their families, but, um, but groomers can use them to befriend and groom and manipulate the young people um, into sexual or criminal activity. So some indicators for online exploitation. The, it doesn't mean if your child is having any of these that is exploited, but it's a good way for you to start thinking what it may happen uh, happening and how you can help. Uh, some changes you may see in their behavior could be an indicator, an indicator for exploitation. I always say to parents, and I say that to police officers when I speak to them, um, just go with that feeling. You know your, be your kids better than anybody else. If you get that feeling that something is not right, then probably it's not. Um, talking about older or new friends, if they start talking about people they met online, talking about gifts or money they, they have received online, uh, becoming withdrawn very secretive, having a new phone or more than one phone, 
uh, receiving large numbers of calls and messages and worried about being away from their phone can be some of the indicators. So who is at risk? Um, anyone. Uh, any child can be at risk of, of exploitation and online grooming. Um, any, any, any child, any race, any gender, any faith, regardless their age and regardless where they live. Some children are more at risk due to other vulnerabilities they may have. Um, kids that they have been neglected, emotionally, physically abused, kids that they might have special education needs and disabilities um, because they might not un necessarily understanding um, the whole online um, a way of, of, of how, how it works and how people can manipulate them and quest them. Um, they may lack communication still, uh, skills, sorry, um, but also the children from the LBGT communities um, can not be victims of online exploitation, especially when they feel they don't have anybody to talk to, okay, and they turn to the to the internet for help. So in relation to social media and online gaming, this is how the kids see it. It's, it's amazing. They like it. They chat. They have fun. And when we talk to parents and adults, they immediately they say, oh, it's cyberbullying, it's harassment, it's so bad for the kids. So you can see the big difference between adults and children. So if we start a conversation with a child saying how horrible the internet is, they're not going to listen to us. Okay? Because Think about it. Internet can give us a lot of freedom. Internet can teach us a lot of things. Obviously, we need to teach our children how to be safe on it. I, I always say to parents, would you ever tell your child to go out and cross the road before you teach them how to do that? It's the same with the internet. So some of the social media and gaming that are young people and children are talking to me about when I go to schools um, is the ones you see on the screen. It's not just that, but this is the most popular. They are, they are coming out all the time. So TikTok, it, it became very popular in, um, in the first lockdown. Um, it's still very popular now. So it's creative media. You download the song, you dance to it, and then you upload the video. What you need to realize and understand is that if there is no private settings, the video goes to the whole universe. So anyone anywhere can see it, they can view it, okay? They can comment on it, and sometimes they can share it. Um, it's 13 plus, it's one of the most popular um, um, apps for children. So YouTube, very popular with any age. Um, when I speak to kids in primary school from year three, they say that the YouTube kids is for little ones. So kids are on the proper YouTube. Um, digital volts, which is the calculator. Um, if I say to my child, you are not allowed to have Instagram because you are not on the age we are allowed to have Instagram, they can say, OK, don't worry, I don't want it. Um, what they can do, they can download the digital vault application and they can hide what I don't want them to have behind it. So they can hide apps, they can hide games, they can hide files, they can hide photos. Um, let's make something very clear. Every, um, every mobile has a calculator. This is something extra. Usually, when you click on it, you need a password. And it's not just um, calculator, there is a piano as well. Um, kids are getting very clever on, on, on digital vaults now. So Kick. Kick is a messaging app. Um, the only difference with other messaging apps is that you only need a nickname and you are on it. Instagram, um, I think it's the most popular app, um, social media app for any age, everywhere in, in, in the whole universe. Is so popular. Um, Instagram is 13 plus, um, and it has been voted previously the the worst 
social media application for mental health and self-esteem for young people by young people. Um, House Party is a group video chat and um, um, it was very popular during the lockdown and kids don't really mention it anymore uh, but it's there because it, it was like as soon as we came out of, of lockdown and I started going back to schools it, it was something that, that it was mentioned to me all the time. Tinder. Tinder is a is an, is um, a dating app. It's eighteen plus. The reason I put Tinder there is because a lot of the children are mentioning it to me, um, and I'm not talking only about teenagers. I'm talking about primary school kids as well. Uh, WhatsApp. WhatsApp is again messaging app and is very popular for primary school kids. Very popular for with primary school kids. Um, in the European Union countries and countries under GDPR, which the UK is under GDPR, is 16 plus. Um, Your Life, which is the yellow one with the play in the middle, um, is more popular with girls, to be honest, because of the stickers um, and, and the videos that the kids can play with. Um, Snapchat very popular with teenagers from year nine, very popular. Um, with Snapchat, one thing I want you to be very careful and talk to your kids about is in relation to the maps. Um, if your children have the maps, the Snap maps open, uh, please have a conversation with them in relation to either put them on a private or um, actually put the ghost you see there on top of their head um, and go to ghost mode, which you can find on the settings on the map. The reason I'm saying that, that map is so accurate that between three houses, if I follow you, I can tell you which one is your house. If you are on a bus, it shows you on a bus. If it's raining, it shows you that raining. Um, I did put my Snapchat on in one of the schools uh, when I was working with a very small group of young people. And um, not only it was showing me in the school, it was actually showing me which part of the school I was in. And the kids were shocked, they couldn't believe it. Um, Telonym is anonymous messaging. That's exactly what it is, and that's exactly how the kids are using it. Um, unfortunately, there is a lot of harassment um, and bullying that goes on on that um, app, unfortunately. Um, and let's make something very clear. It's not the app's fault that this is happening, it's how we are using it, how people are using the apps. Um, so Olifants is an American um, uh, subscription services. Um, it's 18 plus, so if we take it black and white, you need to take a photograph of your face with your ideal or driving license next to it to prove you are 18 plus. Unfortunately, um, it, were, it became very popular with the kids in the UK during lockdown when um, various people on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, they were talking about it, okay, about OnlyFans. Um, and talking how you can sell photographs of yourself um, for a lot of money on OnlyFans. Um, a lot of people are saying, well, if that's the way you have to prove how old you are to go on OnlyFans, why is it there? Is that because if you are on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, and you hashtag OnlyFans, your photograph can be viewed in OnlyFans, okay? And then you can have people contacting you. Or you have all the people, adults, opening accounts for children. And let's make something very clear. Not everything that people are saying to the kids, like £400 allowance a week if you're sending me photographs, is true. Some kids, they send photographs, and I'm not talking about photographs of themselves dressed, I'm talking about naked photos, and they never get money, and they're scammed, and then they are blackmailed by these people because they, the kids are in, in fear, they don't want their parents and carers to see the photographs. So they send more and more and more with the, with, with the hope that people will stop um, blackmailing them. So Omigo, um, it's talk to strangers. That's exactly what it did. What it does. So if you Google Amigo, it gives it gives you a box to put a hobby, and then you put a hobby, and then it links you with eighty different countries and lets you to chat. They will not share your information, 
But think about the 12 year old, the 13 year old, the 10 year old talking to all these strangers anywhere in the universe. So Among Us, Among Us is very popular with primary school age children. Um, uh, my child is hooked on it. That's, uh, I, I, I have the same problems like everybody else. Um, we have conversations about how to stay safe online all the time. But what is Among Us is like playing Cluedo, to be honest. Um, so when kids are playing Among Us, um, it's 10 of them, 10 people playing the game. There are some tasks they need to do. One of them is the imposter from the beginning, and then they go to the chat rooms and they need to chat uh, in order to decide who is who is the uh, imposter. So that's where the kids forget that they are playing with people they have no clue who they are. There is the private setting, there is the private um, site of Among Us, but having conversations with my own child, is, she's like, it's so boring because I don't have enough people on the private in order to have a really good game. So if your kids are playing Among Us, just remind them that when they go to the chat rooms, it's not with people they know um, if they're playing the public side of it. So Discord, um, it, used, it, well, it used to and is still very popular with gamers. Um, but now what, what the company did, they actually have it as a messaging app. It started getting very popular with secondary school kids. Um, I hear it all the time in secondary schools now. So Yellow or Yobo is, that is targeting girls and boys 13 to 17 year olds who are basically looking to connect with other kids, okay, their age. But I like Tinder, the dating app. Yellow has no checks in place to verify ages. So anyone of any age can be in there, okay? So what children are targeted online for, for obviously uh, sexual images, nudes, sex, uh, uh, live streaming sex, or, or um, um, call sex on phone sex, um, drugs, uh, drug trafficking, criminality, drug dealing, working for the gangs. There are some recruiting that, uh, recruiting that the, the gangs are doing online as well especially through videos, um, sexual favors, sexual gifts, and also working for the network uh, for the criminal networks. So what can we do as parents? Um, we have to talk to our children about being safe online. Um, give them the opportunity and the authorization to come and talk to you if something goes wrong. Without the fear, you're going to take their phone away. Without the fear, you're going to take their tablet away, their laptop away, okay? Because um, if they feel, okay, if I go and speak to my parents, carers, grandparents, I don't know who, um, and they're not going to take my phone away because they're, they're going to sit and, and have a discussion with me, then it will be easier for them to come. Don't get angry. I, I mean, as parents, we go 100 miles immediately it's like oh my god what happened to you why did you do that how many times i told you that um check names and contact uh, and features um if appropriate um use private and parental controls for your children i know it's more difficult for teenagers but again have those conversations with them and turn locations and settings off so what to do make an agreement with them about a time um, they're using online and offline. Um, some people may be pretend to be something they're not. The risks um, of giving personal information. When we're taking personal information to children, always remember to tell them, yes, of course, their name, their address, their date of birth, the bank de details. What about the, their, their, um, the names they're using for their social media? What about the names they're using for their um, um, gaming. Those are private uh, information as well, okay? Uh, the dangers of meeting someone who they only met online in the real world. And if you think your child will take the risk, tell them, if that is going to happen, can you please let me know? And we go together. Have that option open. Because some kids 
I'm not going to think twice. Um, share the same curiosity for their online friends like you do with, your, with their offline friends. Um, reporting, you can report to, to CEOP, um, especially with, um, I put the icon there, and also please teach your children how to report on CEOP as well. They, they can report it as well. Um, support for parents with PACE, Parents Against Child Exploitation. They're amazing. They have so many resources on their website and they have a telephone number. Um, you can call them. There are so many resources out there and how you can report um, stuff. Um, obviously, it's the police, the 999, the 101. In Avon and Somerset, there is online reporting as well if you don't want to speak to anybody and the Internet Watch Foundation. So if um, and and the last slide is about Stop It Now, uh, which basically offers anonymous and confidential support to help you or someone you may suspect they are uh, and you are worried about uh, sexual abuse of children um, to prevent it. So it's totally anonymous. Is uh, sorry, it's totally confidential support and you can go and stop it now.